Today's episode of the Dan Cave is brought to you by Zillow. Now this is a story all about how some of my favorite TV shows got flipped turned upside down and I'd like to take a minute just to sit right there. I'll tell you all about why and how I'm here at the House and Fresh Prince of Bel Air, which actually isn't in Bel Air at all. Built in 1910, it's located in Los Angeles' Brentwood neighborhood where, according to Zillow, homes typically retail for $2.6 million. We so rich. Why we can't afford no seal. <laughs> but anyway, the real reason I'm here is because the Fresh Prince, like so many Jon Snows or heirs from so many Game Shark hacked saves of Final Fantasy VII, was brought back from the dead. That's right, after its fourth season, NBC canceled the Fresh Prince of Bel Air for some reason. But because they received so many fan letters and Will Smith got so many letters, they actually brought it back from the grave. But why should The Fresh Prince be the only prince who was promised? What about so many other amazing television shows that were canceled before their time? Well, today in the Dan Cave, I'm gonna run down the best canceled TV shows that deserve another season. Or four. Maybe a movie, too. We'll talk. Clone High. Let's face it, high school sucks, but it sucks even more if you're the clone of one of history's greatest figures who's secretly being raised to be exploited by the US military. Especially if you're Abe Lincoln and you just want to smooch Cleopatra and high five Gandhi and get one over in that jerk JFK and deny your obvious crush that you have on Joan of Arc because hey, talking about your feelings is scary. Hi mom. Such was Clone High. It was a national treasure that was taken from us far too soon after just 13 episodes. Say what? Now that series creators Phil Lord and Chris Miller are no longer working on that Han Solo movie, maybe they'll have time to bring back one of the greatest shows of all time. I mean, it's a good idea, right? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Nothing bad ever happens to the Kennedys! Whoa! Agent Carter. While the Marvel Cinematic Universe still has to wait until 2019 to get its first female-fronted solo film, Agent Carter's already been there and done that with two glorious seasons of killer espionage action set in the early days of the Marvel Universe. Now, not only did Agent Carter provide valuable connective tissue between MCU past and present, but it showed a badass lady spy kicking butt and taking names both on the field and in her own department. Seriously, what Hydra agent do I need to defrost to get a third season of this show? Is it Walt Disney? Happy Endings. What Friends was to the 1990s, Happy Ending should have been to the 20-teens or whatever the heck we're calling this garbage decade. This incredibly funny sitcom about a group of friends living in Chicago had more heart, humor, and puns per square inch than 90% of other TV comedies out there. ABC, in classic ABC fashion, didn't realize it was sitting on a mountain of gold and sentenced the show to an early death. But at least we'll always have three glorious seasons of pitch-perfect misery parodies, deep-cut pop culture references, and aptly named food trucks. Take me home tonight. And really nice apartments, like way nicer than I could ever afford. But I'd still probably set up some custom listings on Zillow, see if I could find a place nearby so that maybe one day I could also join Boys to Menorah. Hannibal. Some shows manage to transcend the medium of television and become works of art. Other shows inspire fanatical fan bases and feature gory murders that seem impossible to show on network TV. Hannibal is all of those things and more in one weird little package, and how it wound up on NBC remains one of life's great mysteries of Laura. With all-star performances, especially by the likes of Mads Mikkelsen as Hannibal Lecter, Brian Fuller's reimagining of Thomas Harris's iconic novels developed a rich mythology, featured better food photography than Top Chef, and were creepy crawly delights to the bitter end. Except the bitterest part is there's so much story left to tell. Now hopefully NBC or Netflix or some weird content channel, heck E-Bombs World, I don't care, will see the light and give us more of that sweet, sweet Hannibal. But in the meantime, I guess I'll just go on Zillow and see if I can find an apartment with a kitchen as nice as Hannibal's, because that show weirdly makes me want to cook. Like a lot. Not humans though, especially not if there's any cops watching. Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip. Now, 30 Rock wasn't the only major network sitcom about the trials and travails of running a major network sketch comedy show. It was just the one that won. Unfortunately for Aaron Sorkin fans, Studio 60, which looked like it was going to be the West Wing for the fast-paced world of late-night sketch comedy, never really found its footing while it was on the air. But like most Aaron Sorkin shows, in between the uncomfortably preachy bits, there was an actually great show waiting in the wings, struggling to find its voice. Unfortunately, this voice was silenced too soon, which let Sorkin go on to make one of my least favorite shows of all time, The Newsroom. One about which if I speak any longer, my eyes will roll so fast in my head, it will become the Hadron Collider. I'm not joking, I hate that show. You don't look satisfied. 
pushing daisies. Brian Fuller may just be the king of creating cult hit TV shows that are canceled before their time, and Pushing Daisies is a prime example of this. The premise was simple. Pie Maker Ned brings the power to bring the dead back to life just by touching them, but there's a catch. A second touch will literally kill them. And with great power comes great responsibility, and with a great premise came an even greater TV show full of a wonderful ensemble cast, oddball humor, and some seriously tasty looking pies. I mean, honestly, what else could you ask for apart from four seasons, a movie, and maybe a free pie? Please, Brian Fuller, I need that pastry. Party down. Are we having fun yet? I sure hope so, because honestly, it's been difficult without more party down in my life. This wickedly funny show about a group of struggling Hollywood types working at a catering company while they tried to make their dreams of becoming actors, writers, and owner-operators of all-you-can-eat soup restaurants was sadly ahead of its time. With a murderer's row of talented comedians, the show was heartfelt, hilarious, and took us everywhere from Sweet Sixteens to murder acquittal celebrations to adult video awards. And honestly, the episode where they cater Steve Gutenberg's 50th birthday party might just be the single greatest episode of television of all time. That's right, I said it, I will die on this hill. You really should take your underwear off. Jets feel great on your balls. Freaks and Geeks. The quintessential example of a TV show taken before its time, Freaks and Geeks managed to perfectly capture the angst of high school and tell a timeless coming-of-age story about growing up in a small town. And that's to say nothing of its amazing cast of future superstars like Seth Rogen, Linda Cardellini, James Franco, Martin Starr, and Jason Segel. Created by Paul Feig and produced by Judd Apatow, Freaks and Geeks gave us 18 glorious episodes before NBC decided there was just too much good in this world. It deserved many, many more episodes, but sadly that ship has long since sailed into an iceberg shaped exactly like NBC. Deadwood. The Wild West was a dangerous, dirty, and frankly deadly place, and no TV show managed to capture this better than HBO's Deadwood, and yes, that includes HBO's Westworld. This show is decidedly not safe for work. Case in point, the F-bomb is used a staggering 2,980 times, which is approximately 1.6 F-bombs per minute, and probably the same amount of times you'll say it watching it in your living room, because this is a sweeping saga of Deadwood's evolution from a gold mining camp to a thriving frontier town, and Ian McShane is the gift that keeps on giving, and he's giving his absolute best as the surly, violent Al Swearingen. Now, fingers crossed that the long-rumored Deadwood movie turns out to be more than just a snake in my boot, or else somebody is going to poison the watering hole at HBO. Selfie. Now, dumb title aside, this was a modern version of My Fair Lady, or Pygmalion if you're nasty, starring John Cho and Karen Gillan that was legitimately great but needed time to build an audience. So naturally, it was cancelled after just 13 episodes, because the world's a cruel, unfeeling place! Remember how much you like Karen Gillan on Doctor Who? Well, guess what? It wasn't just because of the Weeping Angels genius, it's because she's an international treasure and she had great chemistry with John Cho. Instead, everyone who didn't watch created a butterfly effect that led to the damn Emoji Movie. So I hope you're happy, Charles. You did this. You did this. And those are the best TV shows that were taken far too soon and definitely deserved at least one more season. But tell me, what are your favorites? What would you add to this list? Let me know in the comments below and give me a previously canceled thumbs up while you're there. Now be sure to like and subscribe or else you might miss next week's show about the story of nine people looking for love at Christmas time before we all die in a fiery nuclear apocalypse caused by an unhinged Air Force general in Doctor Strange Love Actually. Until next time, keep on digging. Thanks again to Zillow for sponsoring today's show with millions of photos of homes for sale and for rent, historical pricing data, and other tools for home buyers. Zillow, find your way home. Let's open up the old mailbag, shall we? At Austin7 asks, if Marvel Studios got the X-Men back today, how would you want them written into the MCU? Well, that's a great question. I'd want them to appear during the end credits of Captain Marvel. Basically, Captain Marvel, someone who spends a lot of time in deep space, gets called in to see an empress, specifically Empress Lalandra of the Shi'ar Empire. But who's this weird bald guy sitting next to her in a wheelchair? Well, it's none other than Charles Xavier. He explains where they've been the whole time, why you haven't seen the X-Men for years. They've been out in deep space helping the Shi'ar and dealing with the Dark Phoenix. It's a perfect integration with everything Fox is doing and everything Marvel could do. Make it happen, Simon Kinberg. You have my number, I think. Probably not. Here it is. Don't, everyone else, don't look. That's my number for real.